This video is all about masking in Darktable. Today we'll see parametric masks and drawn masks combined together. So how to combine several, one or several drawn masks with one or several parametric masks. We're getting to the end of the series and this is where it all comes together. I'm Nicholas and let's go. Let's start by reminding ourselves few things about intersections and union. So with drawn masks, we go to drawn masks. The default behavior, if I have two drawn masks, which we'll call A and B. So if I draw two masks, whatever the shape on the photo, then by default, the selected area will be the union of both masks. So drawn masks work as a union. Parametric masks, parametric, by default, if you have a zone selected, so it's not drawn, but let's say you have a mask A where you select a luminosity range, and with another mask, you select a color, a hue, then by default, Parametric masks will select the intersection of both. That is the default behavior in Darktable at the moment, version 3.67 and 8. I'm going to, um, 8 is not out yet, but uh, I don't think it will change before 8 is out. Now, if you're doing drawn and parametric, if you have one drawn and one parametric, then the default behavior, if you have a drawn mask, let's say an ellipse, and you select some kind of luminosity range or a hue or something, then by default, it's an intersection. So intersection, just to remind you quickly, is what belongs to both masks at the same time. You have to be in one and in the other. And to be in a union, yeah, is the kind of the addition of both means that you're in either one or the other or both there we are okay now let's get down to some practical examples okay so in this first example the idea will be to select this cliff as best as we can and try and uh, recover a bit of the shadow areas they're a little bit dark um now there might be a way there is probably a way to do it with just drawn masks probably a way to do it with just parametric masks. Well, the aim of this video and in all the other examples is to show how they both combine together. So let's um, reset the tone equalizer and um, let's just get the masking correct for that. So just press on the mask exposure compensation, the auto mode. And let's go into the option, which is for drawn and parametric masks. So just a reminder, no masks, that's the cross. Uniform mask, drawn mask, parametric mask, and then drawn and parametric, which is this one, which is the one I would actually um, use by default because you'll see it's the lazy way really is using drawn and parametric masks. When you know how both work, then usually you can get quickly by combining both uh, a, good, uh, a good selection of what you want. So the first thing to notice is that the cliff is quite well defined on the top along the sky here, not so well defined at the bottom. I'm going to start by drawing a gradient. So let's start with that. Let's make the gradient a little bit smaller. So the idea will be to let's have a good mask. Is to have a good selection at the top of the uh, cliff and gradually phase out towards the bottom. Let's leave it like that for the moment. So um, that's the first part. Now in the parametric masks, so just underneath the drawn here we have the parametric masks. Let's have a look at what we could choose, what parameter we could choose to select the cliff. So if you remember there's a shortcut which is on the keyboard a C. And we can have a look at which one of the parameters will actually show us the mask or the zone of the air, the photo we want to select the best. And I think that here you'll agree with me that the 
best one would be the luminosity, so the JZ. And here, so we need to select some dark areas. So let's go on that and bring the whites down until we start losing all the areas around. Now, you remember what I just said about drawn and parametric working as an intersection. Here is the exact example of that. It's keeping the gradient and it's eliminating from this gradient everything that's white. So I am intersecting a drawn and a parametric mass here. So at one point, you'll see if I go too far, then I'm going to start losing some of the cliff there just at the point where I want to bring it back, the sky comes back. So I'm not going to bother about the sky too much. I'm just going to get a nice selection on the cliff and I'm going to use a drawn mask. So I'll make a path, just kind of a quick path around and that will eliminate everything that's not in the correct zone of the photo. So here, let's take a drawn mask. And so what I just said, remember about combining two drawn masks, if I combine two drawn masks, then they will um, be combined as a union. So here, if I just drew a drawn mask, look around here, let's go a little bit into the sea right click to close and now it's done a union so it's joined together it's the drawn mask and the gradient so the path and the gradient so i've lost the gradient here and i've kept the um the part of the sky that was selected in the gradient and that is not what i want what i want to do is an intersection of the two drawn masks and intersect also with the parametric mask so here I need to go into the mask manager and in the group tone equalizer, the path here is in a union mode and I need to put it in intersection mode. And by doing that, I am saying that I want to be inside the drawn shape and keep the gradient and use the lightness parameter, um, which is on the JZ channel. And that is a pretty good selection. Let's have a look now, if we look a bit closer, maybe not 200%, but just 100%, just to remind ourselves of some um, things we can do on drawn masks. We can move these nodes individually. By clicking on control and on the line, I can add some control points here. So control click every time. If I click on did that by a mistake actually on a segment here between points i move the segment and the two extremities if i click on a point i just get the point so here i can refine the drawn mask a little bit if you want um i can also refine the feather make locally the feather smaller or bigger what i'm trying to do if you notice i had a bit of selection on the clown there that i didn't really want and I'm not too bothered about the uh, part at the back there. I've kept the gradient, which is not bad. I have a bit of a, an awkward selection around the top. And the feathering radius will do that because the feathering radius will make a selection based on the um, luminosity, the hue of the pixels that are surrounding. And here, see, the problem is now is by doing that, I've selected again the dark parts of the clouds there. I don't know if you saw that. Put feathering to zero. And the cloud's fine, but I've lost the bushes here at the top. And if I put some feathering on, then now I have selected the top of the, the cliff properly, but I have uh, also selected some cloud. So I think contrast will be the correct one for that. Contrast, which will... Um, uh, select more the parts that are already selected and less the parts that are not. Um, now I can fiddle around with this for a long time. I don't honestly think that it'll change much on the final image. Um, I think you're better off kind of having a blurry mask so as not to see any transitions um, rather than trying to select pixel by pixel mask. So let's go back, fit to screen. I'll click on the view mask icon, 
click on the arrow so I don't see the shapes anymore. And really, well, with the tone equalizer, if I have a look on the screen, minus six, minus seven, it's this portion. Let's recover some shadows around there, maybe in the blacks too. Uh, and I'm certain not to um, do anything outside of that. Now, the tone equalizer is made to selectively boost parts of the image and um, so I hear the darker tones so even without a mask I can hear you saying this already in your head um, I probably wouldn't have touched this sky anyway um, what I'm actually doing is protecting more the bottom part with a gradient but um, yes I could have done it simply I wanted to show you uh, how to combine two masks so that is the the aim is um, not processing the image the quickest possible but to show how parametric and drawn masks combine together. So that's the first picture. Let's move on to another. In this photo, I'd like to add a bit of uh, sharpness to the head of the insect. So I'd like to make a nice selection. And I'll show you a method um, that doesn't work and uh, that'll enable us to understand a little bit better how masks are combined. Um, so let's go into the contrast equalizer select parametric and drawn and try and start with a parametric mask so we imagine we can select the blues of the head and if we look look we're in lab lab mode and with chroma and hue but i'd like to find i do like using the uh, the jzczhz color space but i can get that if i go into the blending options here go into rgb scene and i get my color space back so HZ, let's look at the hues. Hues, yes, well, as we thought, blue, a blue head, orange background should give me a good selection. Let's just check the others. So some desaturated parts in the head there could be useful. And in JZ, well, a bit of black, but not much else. Now I can use the boost factor a little bit if you remember that. The boost factor will give me different um, settings for the uh, luminosity range that I can have. Um, so, go, okay, let's go to the CZ, uh, HZ slider here. And if it doesn't mind giving my photo back, let's go and select an area. Now, something going on with the C button. Why is it? See, come back. That's very strange. Okay, compress history. Go back. Sometimes I do that. And I think we're back to working order. Okay, I've got too much yellow selected. And that doesn't actually look too bad in the selection. So I have the head, I can add a bit of a feathering radius. There we are. And so I could do the sharpening on that, but I'd like to actually select the antenna there, the dark parts, maybe the eyes a little bit better, the top of the head a bit better. So the idea would be to select the um, darker parts, the, the, um, the blacks better. So I'd like to use the JZ um, and uh, add that into my selection with parametric masks but if you remember parametric masks are in exclusive mode that's the intersection mode so we need to put it into inclusive and there the screen goes blank now it took me a long time i thought it was a bug it's not a bug normally if i go into inclusive mode it inverts all the other masks the parametric masks so puts them to zero and the selection doesn't change but here the selection has changed Let's go back from drawn and parametric to parametric, which actually seems reasonable. So we actually learn that as you're building masks, you start with a drawn mask, then choose drawn. If you start with parametric, do parametric. And if you want to go to drawn plus parametric, do that afterwards. So in inclusive mode, here it's working as expected in JZ, the sliders are inverted. So if I want to add blacks, I grab the top triangle, add in the blacks, 
and move back a little bit and back off for a bit of a feathering. And I have a nice selection there of the head, but I also have as a side effect the lower part of the image that's selected that I absolutely do not want to sharpen. So the idea would now would be to draw a mask, have a drawn mask around the head. And um, as we did in the previous photo, just do the selection on that part. So let's go to the mask manager. Now I do have a path here. I'll delete that. I already made it. I'll make it again. So the idea is that I want to go into drawn and parametric. And here I have this um, bug in inverted commas. Um, it's something that's bugging me anyway. Is why is the whole screen selected? Well, the explanation I have is that when I go into inclusive mode with parametric masks, it actually sets all the other masks, the other parametric masks, to the opposite polarity. So it's the, um, what it's doing is inverting the masks. So from nothing selected, it goes to, or from everything selected into nothing selected. And I think it is actually um, doing the same for a, a drawn mask where the drawn mask is empty, so there's nothing selected, uh, nothing drawn. So the inverse of that is that everything is selected. And we can actually check that that is how it's working. So if I remove that, um, the, the, the yellow screen and go for a path and draw a path around the head. So I now have a group with a contrast equalizer with a path inside. If I have a look what's selected now, I actually have my path. So the whole of it so it is a union. It's actually doing that. Plus, you can see the parametric mask underneath. And if I move that, then I do have, you see, my drawn mask and the parametric mask because I am in inclusive mode. And what I'd like to do is have an intersection between this drawn mask and the union of parametric masks and that unfortunately doesn't seem to be possible either i'm doing a union of everything all the parametrics and all the drawns or i can do whatever i like with several drawns and intersect the parametrics so there we are that is why i was saying it doesn't work as i wanted to so this is a failed example of how to go about it and that means that the options when you want to use inclusive modes on parametric masks, it means that drawn masks become actually pretty useless. So we'll have to uh, find a workaround, Let's reset that and start selecting again with another method. So we're back to zero with this contrast equalizer. And I'll show you one way of uh, selecting just the uh, head and um, sharpening it so we're going to avoid in drawn and parametric masks to use the inclusive mode so first of all i will get the path back that i had last time I've made it a little bit bigger around the area that i wouldn't mind sharpening and really what i'd like to do now is remove so by intersection i'd like to remove the parts of the image here parts of the selection that don't correspond to um, parts I'd like to sharpen. So by default, I'm in LAB mode. So I would go into the um, JZ, CZ, HZ color space and have a look. And I can actually select those blues. Um, really, I'd like to select the oranges and remove those. Now, selecting the oranges, I could so select kind of a background there, see what we have, and invert my selection. So toggle the polarity, invert. And there, I'm not too bad, actually. I've removed most of the background. Um, you could also refine this if you want to select more. So you've got a nice, neat selection. But it's better before, and then invert that again. Every time you change the selection, you have to invert the uh, polarity. Um, if I put a bit of a feathering radius around there, then I'm not too bad. Um, 
add a bit of contrast. Now remove a bit of opacity. And I've actually got some things that are not too bad. Now, obviously, I could want to keep the legs and here the, I don't know, maybe I'm not quite getting what I want. There are two ways I could do this. Either I reduce the, uh, path, the drawn path and kind of just go around the head part. Or I could use the details threshold and remove parts of the image that are blurry. Not too much. And I actually have quite a decent selection here because as I said, what I wanted was I want to keep the uh, the antenna here. I want the eyes and the face. I've maybe some of I didn't need to decide whether I want to keep the legs or not. But there we are, that's a method that's um by intersection. So you choose a path and then you remove, you remove, you remove parts that you don't want with the parametric masks. And that is what I find usually works for me the best. And once you've done that, you can add, add a little bit of extra sharpening. Far too much here. There, I don't know. That's it's really awful on my screen, but you should be able to see the difference before and after. So you can see the sharpening here on the front legs of the insect and the head. There we are. So, and the selection was that. So using um, one drawn and one parametric mask. And that is a way to do it. Let's see. I'm removing that. It's really awful. Um, double click. I can't leave it like that. Sorry. Ah, uh, it doesn't want to. Never mind. Oh, why not? Never mind. Leave it. Let's go to another example. In this final example, we shall have a look at how to combine several um, drawn masks with one or more parametric masks. So the idea with this will be to select the boots and the white uh, furry sleeves of um, the Father Christmas here and make them a little bit whiter. They look a little bit orangey to me. Let's make those whiter, give them a clean look. So that will typically be in a new instance of color calibration where we'll start by drawn masks which is usually what I do I'm kind of um, draw some zones on the picture and then refine that after so I've taken a path and let's draw around the first boot here so what we have selected now is one boot now I need to do three more so by clicking on control and add path control click the first one's disappeared from the screen but it's still there and I can draw another one with left click, left click, left click, left click. And when it's done, right click and it's disappeared, but it is there. And then left click. I don't have to choose the tool here several times. I can just do left clicks around the zones I want. Right click to finish. And now I actually have four paths in the mask manager. Path one to four. And if I have a look at what's selected, those four paths are there. So now. We have four paths. I can make them appear using the little arrow there. And I'd like to refine those with a parametric mask. So it's going to draw on a parametric and refine those. I'll remove that. Let's have a look at the hue. What's happening there? So I can actually see the orange uh, color compared to the red and the blue background. So that seems to be a good choice. Now in chroma, they seem to be a little bit all over the place, so that doesn't look very useful. And in lightness, well, yes, they're supposed to be white. So they are a little bit brighter in the background. So we could also use that slider. So let's go back into the view of the mask and move this triangle from the left, removing all the dark tones so we can see some things that are disappearing already. And at one point, I've got to go very carefully, just carry on moving up until something starts to here. I've, I'm losing it here. I need to back off there, fill that out with a bit of feathering, maybe. Just back it off. And I have already refined the selection a little bit from where I was here to 
here, so that's a little bit better. Now I'll use the hue. So I know that um, these boots are in the oranges. So the most drastic effect will happen when I remove the um, reds and blues. I can move those actually quite far down. Did you see all of a sudden the shape around the boots has been drawn there? Now how far can I go down before losing something? I'm moving actually quite far here. And there I've lost it. So really, well, it's when I reach the oranges, which is what I expected. Not too bad. How far can I move the other slider up before losing things? I'm starting to lose the boot here. So let's move that down again. Maybe with a bit of feathering. And that's not too bad. If I put the feathering radius up, that always helps refine. The, uh, the edge and um, a bit of contrast. If I want to do some cleaning up around the mask and actually have quite a good selection. Um, if I wanted to do this, uh, probably take some more time. What I could do is go individually around each mask and like I did in the first example, kind of move these points around and adjust the feathering locally try and get something a little bit better around there but if you have a look the selection isn't too bad and i don't think that you'd actually see very much um if i change the white balance there i don't think you'd see very much spill over let's say this little point here i don't think they'd change much so let's go back to the view of the screen and let's change it's white in those boots so how do i do that um, there is a whole video on how to use the color calibration by the way if you're not quite sure how to use the channel mix this channel mixer is a very powerful tool i love it um, so i've selected a boot and i noticed that there's 168 red 118 green and 71 blue if i want them to be white white is a form of gray um, so i need to even out the reds the greens and the blues so let's go into the reds and I'm reduce the reds a little bit now, actually looking at the numbers here i'm moving the slider down until i get into the ballpark of the greens here and i'll move the blues up a little bit i'll move the blues up until i get into the 120s. Now I should actually leave a little bit more red. It's in very white. You can see the color of the screen. You look afterwards and you see the color of the screen. Uh, you can adjust the brightness if you find them too bright or not bright enough. And um, let's just remove that color picker. I have a look before and after. That is really strong, very strong. It looks far too strong. So what I'll do is I'll reduce the opacity, the global opacity of the module. If I go down to zero, that is before, that's like as, as if I switched the module off. And now I can set the effect in a little bit there, kind of about 50%. And now I have before with the dirty boots and clean boots before and after. Before and after. And there we are, that's how to do the selection. So this is the end of the video on parametric control masks. It's also the end of the mini series on selections and masking in dark table. So I hope now we have all the tools, all the methods um, you need to make the selections and to adjust your images locally. Well, I'll see you um, or very soon, I hope, in a new video.